know, believe model to reduce obesity among African American and Hispanic populations. Yes? They use the health belief model to uh, uh, reduce the obesity and unhealthy problems in African American and Hispanic population. Since the obesity is increasing worldwide, especially in uh, African American population and Hispanic population, that they found that the obesity problem has more than other type of population. And uh, also the uh, DM hypertension and obesity associated with unhealthy lifestyle and uh, is higher in low income in, uh, population. So uh, they try to find the, more, the new models that uh, will help decrease this problem in the high risk population. They use uh, three key modalities. The first one is the village heartbeat. Uh, which is 16 week program. Um, they focus on healthy lifestyle exercise. They went into the socials and um, try to enhance the good behavior in the population and kind of uh, give them information, education, and encourage them to change their lifestyle. And the second modality is the HBM, which is the health belief model. The conceptual framework uh, for creating healthy behavior, focusing on the positive behavioral change at individual level, and they try to make the individual motivation to change the behavior. There are three main categories of the HBM: the individual perception, which is in like a increased susceptibility of the disease, seriousness of the disease, and benefit of changing the action. The second one is modified behavior, try to change their behavior like individually. And the third model, uh, third category is the likelihood of action. They try to like follow how they change their action and take like um, buy in the behavior that they try to change. The third model is the health coaching. This is one on one health coach. Try to um, contact patients and try to um, let the patients or target uh, subject, set their own goal, goal and uh, set their actions, try to find out the values and uh, uh, change behavior according to the goals and then complete the goals together. Uh, the study found that combining the village heartbeat model and the health belief model with the health, the, the health coaching has more, more benefit. They decrease unhealthy eating habits, decrease weight and fat percentage of the patient comparing to the non-health uh, coaching. So the, they conclude that the health coaching uh, create intrinsic motivation in individual uh, patients or participants that make the Health belief or behavior improvement sustain longer and have more effect to change their behavior. Any question to ask? Can we do it? Mm -hmm. and, uh, for a sustainable outcome, but, but uh, in the this study, the follow up only uh, six, uh, sixteen weeks. I think it's uh, not not claim about the sustainability goal. For the case coaching, they have many steps that they set the primary goals and then they try to find the values and then they finish the goals and set goals and find values and then finish the goal. Uh, find out uh, barrier, barriers and, and make it the barrier. Yeah. But the patient is the one who, who set that goal. I think actually it's, it's quite a good program for, uh, for motivators of your people. Uh, I, as, I, I, as I understand in, in this paper, they try to motivate the people who, who might at least for the poor appliance or the low appliance from the health service, something like that. Because the patient has a low income and in the high criminal something something in this group and 
um, but in, in this program is quite intensive in 15 uh, no, 16 weeks but uh, I, I'm not sure in for the long 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 term is will can sustain this program to, to motivate this people these people right? yeah. people who sustain this type of program how should we go about it uh, I, uh, I, 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 I hope in in initial phase of the program can motivate some degree of the patient, and uh, after 15 weeks, uh, it may have a, a it's like a follow up uh, period uh, every uh, three months in one or two visits and if you if they can sustain you can get the longer period for the follow up but it but they uh, cannot follow the program you can keep them to intensive again <laughs> something like that but it's I think it's quite but uh, actually it's quite uh, consume the result uh, by far more consumer than this or to be the C program. I think similar to behavioral change, it's very difficult to find a factor that can sustain the change for each people, it's individual. Like we talked last relaxation, it's not about the education, but the factor that can uh, affect the people to change uh, for the long time is difficult to find. And I don't know, maybe the research is not the answer, cannot answer. Okay. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> yeah. uh, I think we, 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 we discussed this kind of topic in a pre previous blog as well. Mm -hmm. Actually about the behavioral... Uh, remember the article about the Fitbit in Singapore? Uh, actually, when uh, the people were given uh, incentives, they will do it, and while the incentive is out, they will just return the Fitbit and they will not do a health exercise or uh, more walking compared to the others. I think, um, yeah, you can do it with, uh, for example, like a, a small incentive because uh, the Participants are those with uh, mm. low income, for example. Mm. You can have uh, those kind of things, or perhaps uh, something that what, uh, what they need, like uh, in, like in Africa, they gave uh, Indomie for mm. children mm. to to come for vaccination. So yeah. depends on what they actually need in daily living. So the program will sustain longer, and I think it will success. Mm -hmm. So you you really need to to like uh, have a reward for people to behave, really? Yeah, I think it's yes. for, uh, definitely. <laughs> really? There's a there's a there's a theory called Maslow theory. It's a theory of need. Uh -huh. uh, so it con if I'm not mistaken, it consists of five or six indicator. Mm. Which the first one is um psychological needs. Uh -huh. So it is included in the food place mm. the rest, mm. Uh, mm. money, so it's uh -huh. the basic needs of right. every people. Right. And then up uh, after mm. the, ba uh, the psychological need, mm. safety, and then uh, love and companionship, um, uh -huh. and then, if I'm not mistaken, like self-esteem is in the top. Self so that's why some uh, people don't really think that being safety and healthy is not really important because they can even afford the first line of need, yeah. which is the food, um, money, um, place to rest. So yeah. that's why they really yeah. need incentives, money, or Indomie. Yeah. Yeah. Just, <laughs> just, just to push them. Just to push them. That's okay. the basic terrorism. So basically, people need some like a basic. Uh, Basic need: housing, food, yeah. thing like that. Mm -hmm. But uh, in a way, if you want to change people's behavior or want to do something with them, mm -hmm. and you need to give them rewards all the time, mm -hmm. it's not possible. Mm -hmm. It's not possible, right? Government cannot afford that. Mm -hmm. Only research project can do it and it's very small scale and it's very short time. You cannot afford to do that, no. But 
How about those who can change? Why they change it? Look, consider the problem in, in your perspective. There are some people, right, who can change behavior. Why? Why they have to, why they change it? Maybe they get some benefit, like a healthier right. uh, life, something right. like that. So then maybe that is their need. <coughs> it's their problem. It's their problem. So you, you have to find their problem. It make them realize that their problem is not your problem. It's not your problem. Hypertension is not their problem, but your problem, right? So you have to make them realize that hypertension is their problem. By that way, is step by step. You have to change the concept of problem first. Obesity is not their problem. It's look good, right? <laughs> But you have to make them realize that obesity can cause a lot of health problems. So they need to control their diet. They need to do some exercise. So you have to make that obesity is a problem, their problem, not your problem. I think that's the first step. Then you can like uh, work step by step how to change that. It takes time take time and it's difficult even make them realize that they are problem. And one thing is that if more than 50% of people have that problem, it's no longer a community problem. Okay? Because everybody have it is common. How can you make them Realize that that's the problem. Okay. If 50% of uh, people who age more than 40 have hypertension, so they talk to people, right? Okay, you have it, I have it, so what? Right? So, how can you make this as a their problem, as a community problem. Everybody have to work together. I think that's the, the first step. Before you look at any theory, you have to make sure that that's the problem they want to deal with. If you want to work like, I want to solve community health problem by looking at, for example, hypertension. And people say, why? I have no problem. So in that state, you no longer have any hope. <laughs> right? Because you alone cannot work. No. Even you give a lot of reward. No, they, they don't want to change it. Because it's not their problem, it's your problem. <laughs> I think that, that, that is the thing. Right? Like I, I mentioned the other day, all of you wouldn't do ex exercise because you say, well, why? Why, why do it? You not realize that exercise is a good practice. You not realize that lacking of exercise is your problem. Right? One, one day you may realize that lacking of exercise would be your problem that time you will start doing some exercise. So I think the first step is to make sure that that's the problem, their problem. Before you're looking at any strategy or any theory, any methodology. Yes? I completely agree with you uh, with the concept. Right. But, uh, to change the concern or attitude of uh -huh. the individual. Yeah. But the problem is how, how can we do that? Because the individual is very, has lots of variation okay. and in the aspect of uh, public health. Okay. We 
in fact, when, when you look at the community, there are patterns. There are patterns of behave, belief, uh, behavior. You go there and ask people, and you will see that there's a, not, not many patterns, not many behaviors that vary. You can look at that first. Believe me, there are not many patterns. Even you, you say, well, that's a lot of vari variation. But when, in, that's a lot of variation, but you have to group it. You have to make it like a pattern as a model. So you find uh, public health still has the role to change the attitude of, of the people, but we need to do the, to have the intervention that tailor in each group of people. Right, right. Remember, each community is different from the other, right? But when you go into the community, there are some pattern in there. They might not change, they might not very different from the other one. Look at, we are here, 20 of us, 60, 40. We are different. But in a way, we are the same. Right? So, remember that. So when you go to the community, you look at the, the beginning, you look at the people. They are very different. But if you go, go in there, really, really go in there, you will see the pattern. There are not many. And then you can go and which group you want to work with them first. So you can go like a target. To add, actually, uh, to modify someone's behavior, there are a lot of models, and mm -hmm. how to believe model is one of them. Uh -huh. So, as we actually, it's, it can be clearly uh, answer the question like how to modify their behavior. It's in they say that perceived susceptibility, seriousness, benefit of taking action, taking mm -hmm. action, and cues to action. So, perceived or susceptibility is like uh, whether this patient feel that she's in a Suspensibility. So, like, um, maybe just imagine she has a family with a history of diabetes. She might think that, oh, I might have the risk, right? So, if they think that they're susceptible for that, they would like to do the physical examination on something kind of like that. And then the second was in the seriousness. Uh, if she doesn't realize that how serious the diabetes would be, she won't take the to the test. Like I mean, she she still can work, can walk, and she she might not take the uh, disease seriously. And then uh, and then the perceived uh, benefits of taking action. It's like uh, whether this test has benefit or not. And then for the taking for taking action, it's uh, actually uh, related to the access. To the healthcare and according to the cost, transportation also. So they might consider whether this is benefit or outweigh the, the barrier. So she might not come. And then cues to taking action. It's uh, actually uh, we can say that this is a need the advice to the healthcare provider. Like um, uh, they might uh, uh, giving the advice whether it can be understand by the patient or not. So actually that's the step. So. Briefly, this is actually the journal that taking uh, the the model, and they would like to test it in 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 the real life whether it's work or not. Any question for her? <laughs> so that that means we have to have a tool like questionnaire that which is quite reliable to to measure all of them. Well, we, when we are talking about the tool for our research, it's not only questionnaire. We, we will talk about uh, the, the other methods uh, by the uh, second part of this course. Well, uh, if you really want to do some like uh, implementation about uh, the people, first step you should find first, right, the basic attitude or pattern of behavior in, in the community, what kind of belief or what kind of health problem they have, 
whether daily life that that's the health problem. You can you can do some research. It's not only questionnaire. You can go there and talk to them and do something. There are a lot of things that you can do to find out. Okay. Okay. Let's move on. Variation in health belief across different types of circles screening non-participants. Yes, please. <laughs> Actually, I, I try to understand the, the model, <laughs> model of uh, health behavior, um, but I think it's uh, more easier to to show a diagram and the. <coughs>
and after after they classify the patient and then they uh, interview the, the patient with the with the question to assess the general health belief and behavior and cancer specific belief. After they they interview, they, they score the patient and group the patient then then take the score to analyze uh, how how those have the behavior in different pattern in the different type as 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 the teacher say previous I, I think this paper is uh, is a good exemption ex ex example to class classify the pattern of the patient and then the uh, try to uh, approach this patient in different group and in different type. They interview the, the woman is 25 to 64 years in UK by certified random location sampling across the country. Uh, the patient has classified into four groups and used the multivariate logistic logistic regression to analyze and report at the odd ratio. I just want to summarize the result. For, for the sum result, they said in an awareness group, well, they have the most fatalistic about cancer prevention and has the most negative attitude toward the cancer. Fatalistic, that means the belief that all events that means the cancer is pre is predetermined and therefore unpredictable. Then, then the patient is not too aware of the, the screening. Actually, it's only one 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 slide. <laughs> as, as I, 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 I try to explain, uh, they catalyzed the, the patient who did not uh, participate in the screening to the full group by four patients and then interviewed the patient in the three domains about the uh, health behavior and health belief and uh, cancer specific belief and so we call screening belief then they try to do uh, how the pattern of the behavior in each group uh, they, they summarize that the um, an awareness of an awareness of screening has more spiritualistic about cancer prevention that means the patient thing is inevitable to 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 uh, to have a cancer. They they said in this patient, uh, we should highlight the availability of the screening to improve the awareness and communicate to patient about the positive message around the cancer prevention. That I think is may mean to motivate the patient in this group. And in the the other group. The patient who had not uh, undecided to, to, to have the screening uh, in this group has low cancer risk perception. They can they have low perception about cancer, and they think is they they feel the screening was really went to them. Uh, in this group, the other other subject you should ensure the risk perception to the patient and give him know the benefit of the screening uh, something like that and in, in my opinion in this paper they explore and try to understand the health behavior of the patient uh, who may be our problem because they did not attend to, to screening by using the model of Health behavior is can help us to find the right way to approach this group of the patient 
according to their belief and health behavior. In this paper, in a table two about the different inhale belief, such as the factor of cancer fatalism, in which we provoke uh, the means of score, I think it did not different more, but that we call is different. Uh, in, in your opinion, do you think we should believe in statistical or in the scientific? <laughs> 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 I, I, I think I think you you choose to you choose look at the seven three seven three that's more more easier to 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 interpret because they use the odd ratio to compare different group and they 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 said in the uh, sample in the unaware group they have a, a higher uh, in. I already so inhale belief of the benefit, uh, behavior in general pathologism, future orientation, something like that, and more than the other group. That I think they, they show the trend, the trend of the the behavior of behavior of the group uh, may have some belief more than the other group, and then you just uh, find how to approach this group. I understand that is yeah. just a train, that just a separate pattern and and have the different way to, to solve the problem. So, uh, that you mean this theory helps to classify the location which, which group has an important way to solve the problem or something like that? Yes, looping as the teacher said. Looping and look the pattern and by the right, right solution. The people in different states have different uh, opinion, right? So the way you approach them would be different. Those who are unaware, what kind of strategy you will approach them? It's going to be different from those who are undecided, right? Because if they don't aware, they know nothing about screening. What what should you do? Right? Those who not decide, but they know the screening. How you how you approach them is going to be different. I think it's the same thing that you go to do with other diseases, other health problems. A lot of people are not aware that uh, they have this kind of pill problem, right? So you have to do different from those who are already aware that they have problem. Right? So if you know the, the group that have like a unaware, so you have more target. Approach them, how you would approach them. If you give like a general education for everybody, that could not going to be a success. Because the, the different of uh, need or want are different. So you have to tailor your approach. Right? Yes. Can you explain this model again? <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I think you just know the concept, that's okay. <laughs> because in detail, I, I think that is, I think we know the concept, that's okay. <laughs> They try to to uh, explore the pattern of the behavior of the patient and then grouping by using this model. But this model, uh, but this model actually that the same is 
the patient may may the, the in one patient may have the different state in unaware state that the first state that do uh, patient don't know anything about screening but if you know something but you they but but they don't indicate the, the screening the, the second state or the third state they understand they know but they have some belief some behavior something that they don't to don't, don't cannot decide to screening but they uh, in model they said some 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 decide to intend the screening but some is, uh, decide to not intend the screening yeah the people by, by behavior right but actually I don't understand <laughs> any behavior yeah They they put the side to the not yeah, not yeah, yeah. Yeah. They, they focus only those who don't participate. Mm -hmm. so Why they don't participate? Mm -hmm. So the undecided, we have no solution for undecided participants from from this paper. Yeah. So that that would be another aspect of mm. patients. Right. that I think is important in real practice okay. and uh, uh, how about how to maintain the screening program. <laughs> <laughs> you want them to come screening every yeah. year? Every, every <laughs> year all yeah. have the frequent screening because the cervical cancer is uh, have the long cause of right. the disease. Right. Yeah. When they come to see you, you have to motivate them. You have to, to tell them if they come this year and it's normal, right? It doesn't mean that next year is going to be normal, right? So you have like to, to repeat the benefit of screening. They might really ask you what kind of benefit from screening. I come to your screening for five years. I have nothing for it to mm -hmm. So you, you have to give them the, the answer. Why they have to come every year? Right? And you see a lot of patients who come, a lot of people come only one year and disappear. <laughs> right? <laughs> right? So you have to, like, when they come to see you, you have to say, well, this is not the end of the process. Right? Mm -hmm. It can occur in any time of the year, from now on. But you have to like uh, really make impression that the screening is very good. Right? If they come to see you and they have to wait like uh, three hours and nobody talk to them and uh, when they come for screening is five minutes. Let them wait for three hours. So I wouldn't come next year. And after screening, nobody talked to them. Nicely. Friendly. Why I come next year? Right? So I, I think one thing is about the healthcare system is People want to have friendly services. They will feel, feel like uh, this, uh, come to see my friend. I, I have the experience that uh, I did the study on tuberculosis in uh, government uh, service. One is in uh, Bangkok Metropolitan BMA. They have like a TB clinic in every health center in Bangkok. Another one is the, the 
Ministry of Public Health have to be clinic. The Ministry clinic have very sophisticated uh, machine, so a lot of people. But in the Bangkok Metropolitan Service, they have leg like that. Only X-ray, uh, two people for service. But those who come to BMA service have less drop out than those who come to the uh, ministry service. When they come to BMA clinic, people talk to them like friends. The nurse they know these people in this month, they, 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 they need the with medication. But when they come to the ministry service, it's very official. So the, the service, you don't really need sophisticated uh, tools. You need human touch. Okay. So when, when they come to see you for screening, you give some human touch. I, I think they will come to see you next year. Yes? Uh, but this is a, actually a dilemma in Indonesia mm -hmm. because screening is related to mass people right. to come to you. Mm -hmm. And um, like for example in Indonesia we have a cervical uh, cancer screening with uh, IDA. Mm -hmm. uh, it's actually very short time but because a lot of people need to be screened and uh, the, the human resources is not lack of touch of humanity because a lot of people need uh -huh. to be screened and we have a very limited of time in one day mm -hmm. and there are a lot of people so we don't want to talk too much and then another people have to queue for a long time. Mm -hmm. I think that's a, also a dilemma. We, have, we need to uh, uh, a lot of human resources mm -hmm. and a lot of money to pay for people. Uh, uh, this is a service or uh, is the research? Oh, it's a service. It's a service in public health Why? Why people come? Too many people come at the same time. Um, uh, let's say because of uh, the 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 doctor that assigned in, in in that screen is just for like like two weeks, for example, handling for the uh, it's screening. Not, it's not regular service. Mm -hmm. It's not a. It's a regular, but. Uh, for screening, they, they have a program screening and it's only for for short time because the doctor in the primary health care have to serve, uh, go for another like a, like a regular doctor patient visit, not for screening purpose only. Why, why, why you ask so many people come for screening? Why is it important to have screening? I'm not sure that time, but uh, they 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 like they ask like for one, for example, like one tambun to come to you and and okay. this, this if, if, day. if if you have very limited resource, you can like a uh, uh, ask those who really need screening, those who have tendency of have the list of screening. You wouldn't ask all the people come. If, for example, if you want to have screening, you can like um, have a range of age. Those who move more than 40. If you ask everybody come, so it's too many to manage, right? Those who have higher risk, I think, so you will have less people come, right? Yes. Yeah, right. Otherwise, you cannot manage it. Okay? Yes? I think one thing is the most important in Thailand. I think the, some, some screening is not covered in the East land. It, 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 people need to pay by themselves for screening. I think it's, this is 
a lot of problems. But you, you have you have to consider what thing is that. It's not really, really like a, really have evidence that screening really have the benefit. I see a lot of articles saying that screening is not really benefit. <laughs> and it may make people more anxiety. So you have to consider that. And I don't think you need um, uh, so you you're talking about the, the, the government, right? If if you ask the budget for the government to cover screening, I think you will the the, the, the country going to be bankrupt. <laughs> Because it's very expensive, right? Screening. And the benefit, a lot of people doubt. So you have to consider that also. Yeah? Is it something related to our small country? Maybe it is because of economic background that many people don't go for screening because they think that even though they screen, and there is a suspicion of cancer. We are not going to sustain any treatment. Yeah. So how can we motivate them for the screening? Because they think that we are dying anyway. Even though we screen and we are diagnosed with the cancer, we are we are not going to sustain. We are not going to afford any treatment. Or even though if we go don't go for screening, we will be not diagnosed and we will die anyway. Wow. <laughs> so, okay. So that is the main problem. Well, I, I think you, you have to, to, to look at whether they, they are in the risk group. If they don't have any other risk behavior, any risk factor, just let them go. You don't, you don't need everybody for screening. Right? And screening is only in the mm, high technology hospital. You cannot have the screening in the primary hospital, right? So you don't need everybody come to Kathmandu. Nowadays in uh, Nepal, uh, government of Nepal has uh, made free of cost for uh, cervical cancer screening. Uh, now, since two years. And uh, there is a pro uh, provision of giving uh, around five lakh for the five lakh for medication and all other uh, radiotherapy and uh, chemotherapy for uh, cancer patient. I think this has uh, really helped, uh, in recent days because uh, the main uh, cause is that uh, after people realize that after having cancer they will almost die and why to uh, spend a lot more of money. And now, now the government has been providing the money and food also. And a uh, lot more of patients are now uh, thinking that they can get treatment. And uh, more often uh, uh, using the community level participants and using the cancer survival uh, as a role model can really help in uh, patient and other people in uh, encouraging for the screening, I guess. Okay, let's move on. Yes, Sarah. Going to social ecological inquiry rate of workplace. This article, social ecology correlates of workplace sedentary behavior. Uh, the, the aim of, of this paper to identify the social ecology factors that affect the workplace sedentary behavior. Uh, so for the background of this article, as we know that sedentary behavior is a unique risk factor for uh, cardiometabolic disease and early mortality. Uh, the author do, uh, did the review articles and used the social ecological model and try to find four categories of factors that might affect the sedentary behavior. 
which are uh, the first one is individual factors including job type, uh, work engagement, age, rest, gender, and BMI. The second factor is culture factor. Uh, for example, eating lunch away from the office or walking at lunch. The third factor is physical level, uh, including office type, uh, uh, printer office. That means, is there a printer in at the desk, the, their own desk? Uh, that means that, that if, the, if the officer wants to print, they need to walk outside uh, the area of working or to get the paper. And the last factor is um, organization factors. Uh, for methodology, they include 24 work sites, which are uh, academic center, industrial and government center, and enroll uh, 600. Uh, 40, 41 individuals with the clear inclusion criteria as mentioned in the paper. For the methodology, they let all participants uh, answer the individual question by survey, online survey. And after that, uh, the, every participant received the active power micro accelerometer. It, it's like the similar to uh, Fitbit or something like that. <laughs> it can accurately measure the activity of each participant, and then they stand up, uh, standardize the number, the duration of moving of each participant, and compare uh, each factor, see the correlation of each factor with the uh, activity of each participant. For the result, as you see from the table two, the report, the significant factor in three parts. The first part that they call base model. That's that means the author calculates only one factor to the result. The second one is two-way interaction. They try to combine two factors and see the correlation. And the third one is three-way interactions. They combine three factors and see the correlation. For each factor, the base model, uh, we can see from the table that individual factors have no impact. Job type, uh, age, or uh, something like that has no impact for the sedentary behavior. For the second uh, category, cultural factors, walking to lunch and face-to-face -face inter interaction. I, I think that means the people in the office that likes to talk to each other all the time and walk and talk to them. And these two factors have the impact to the sedentary behavior. For the third factor, physical factors, the private office have the impact. And the last one, industry factors, also have the impact of sedentary activity. Move to the second, second model, two-way interaction. And they found that professional jobs with printer have impact. <laughs> and the government with government uh, sector with the private office also has the impact to uh, to the sedentary behavior. And for three-way models, three-way interactions model, industry job, clerical and private office have the impact on the sedentary model. <laughs> For, for the conclusion of this study, they conclude that the workplace sedentary behaviors may be differentially influenced by multi-level social ecology factors. And uh, for the application, I think we can use the factor uh, from this from this study and uh, make the policy to to increase activity of the officer. And we can tailor from for each uh, each part, each group of the people. Thank you. That's the question. See, when when you look at this uh, behavior, you will see that it's it's very like a normal, right? But if you look at the factor they study, every every point in your environment affect your behavior. Right? Everything. 
whether you go to lunch in the cafeteria or you have lunch at your office, whether you have printer at your desk or you have uh, center printer, everything affects your behavior. It's small things, but everything considered. So I think this paper is, is like a, they would like to emphasize that if you would like to change the uh, health behavior, maybe the target maybe not just like a, to change their mind or their belief, maybe change something physical. Right, right. And it's easier. Mm. It's easier. If you want to ha uh, like a, uh, have a, your, your staff have a healthy food, you, you don't have to like uh, tell them, but you ask the cafeteria. Okay, make food. Right. <laughs> because everybody has to go there, right? So that's, that's it. Have less salty food, have less uh, oily food. Another point from paper is uh, the factor that uh, affect in this group may be not affect important in another group. As we can see that if we analyze only one factor, some factor is significant, but when they combine with another factor, it's not significant. Like this factor in uh, the people who work as professional may be significant, but this factor with in the in the individual who work as an executive may not significant. So the conclusion is the same as like we talked that we should tailor group of grouping the people and give the intervention that tailor in each group. that 
uh, new recommendation more over the guideline such as uh, restrict the ordering of plain display in the acute low back pain and result from the two step is about the they know the barrier between the physician is a first is a knowledge which different between physician and skill very different between physicians and the belief in the physician to this this is and the result from step three about the techniques techniques uh, they uh, found that the technique which are uh, effective to use is a workshop between the physician to have a same way to proceed to uh, the, the patient and the less uh, effective is a DVD and uh, less less than either information information for patients and how to monitor about the physician uh, behavioral change by the practice survey and uh, ask the patient and trace from practice. In this question, I think the strengthness of this uh, theoretical framework is a uh, use a uh, many theory and use the perspective of the practice and uh, use evidence to confirm the results. But the limitation is a require more time for 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 do for for discuss between physician, and I think it's the important is the perspective of patient. This contains of the only uh, perspective of patient, but did not have a uh, intent to to use the perspective of patient. And you want to think more about kind of disease? You can use these models. And your sitting can do it, and anyone should participate in more than all the resistance. This is that my summary in this paper. <laughs> 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 to the predicting walking and cycling behavior change using an estimate theory of bad behavior. of observational cohort data examined whether an extended person of the theory of plant behavior predicted change in walking and cycling for transport and recreation using a population-based sample of adults from three UK municipalities. Uh, theory of plant behavior, um, this theory proposes that behavior is a reason, decision, determined by intention, which is influenced by one's attitude towards the behavior. For example, a positive or negative evaluation of the outcome to a situation. And second one is subjective norms. For example, like the perceived social pressure to perform the behavior. And third one is the perceived behavior control. For example, the perceived age of control over performing that behavior. According to this theory, individuals are likely to intend to follow a particular health action if they believe that the behavior will lead to particular outcomes which they value. If they believe that people whose views they value think they should carry out the behavior, and if they feel that they have the necessary resources and opportunities to perform the behavior, that is, behavior is under an individual conscious control. When examining, examining habitual behaviors, the role of consciousness, consciousness may become less important as behaviors are more likely to be triggered and maintained automatically. It suggests that everyday travel is a habitual behavior, leading some researchers to extend the theory of planned behavior to include a measure of habit. In, a, in this uh, study, this uh, method 
the study is the observation code analysis of eye connect survey data from a population based sample of adults from three municipalities in UK. The eye connect study is a study aimed to evaluate the effects of new proposed built infrastructure for walking and cycling constructed as part of Connect2, a program of projects to build and improve walking and cycling routes at 84 UK sites. Uh, the study was based on the original theoretical framework hypothesis that Connect2 may improve the physical accessibility of local destinations by improving the convenience, safety, psychological perception or other aspects of the routes to those destinations and that, and that these changes may lead to increase in walking and cycling and wider changes in physical activity behaviors. Um, in April 2010, 22,500 adults aged 18 and over living with 5km by road of connect to case study sites were randomly selected in this study from the electro electoral register and sent a survey pack including questions on travel and physical activity behaviors, psychological constructs including those from the uh, TPB and socio-demographic characteristics. The aim of this study is to build on these findings by examining the extent to which an extended version of the theory of uh, planned behavior predicted change in walking and cycling for transport and recreation. That these findings were used to put forward strategies to explore the future development of interventions to promote walking and cycling behaviors. Measures used in this study is first one is extended theory of planned behavior constructs. Here, the online item measures were developed to access constructs from an extended theory of planned behavior framework at baseline and at first and second year follow-up. Six items measuring attitude, subjective norm, and perceived behavior control were adopted from the theory of planned behavior and uh, extended theory of planned behavior concept consists of the uh, six uh, items. One is attitude, subjective, and second one is subject, subjective norms. Another one is PVC, intentions, habit, and visibility. Right. Participants reported their level of agreement with each item according to the five points like a scale was measured, like one was for strongly dis disagree and five for strongly agree, in respect of walking and cycling for transport and recreation separately, such so as they, they responded to each item four times as it, as it applied to each mode and purpose of travel. This approach was chosen because the predictors of walking and cycling are known to, dif known to differ between behaviors and purposes. Another means used was change in walking and cycling for transport and recreation. Walking or cycling for recreation was derived by asking participants to record the total time spent in this last seven days in minutes per week. Undertaking these behaviors for recreation, health or fitness, which was based on a modified, modified short international physical activity questionnaire. Scores from the ETPB constructs. Uh, including attitudes, subjective norms, PVC, intention, habit, and visibility were recorded in three categories. The first one was broadly positive, which were as those who somewhat or strongly agreed with the statement, and those who neither agreed nor agreed was in the neutral categories, and those who somewhat or strongly disagreed was on a broadly negative category. Recording the data in this way allowed low frequency values to combine with others and form a smaller number of logical categories for analysis. Multinomial logistic regression was used to examine the situations between behavior specific baseline and extended in the theory of uh, planned behavior constructs and change in time spent on walking for transport, cycling for transport, walking for recreation, and cycling for recreation after one and two years separately. Uh, talking about the results, 1,796 and 1,465 participants provided first and second year follow-up data respectively. All extended TPB constructs except subjective norms were associated with changes in at least one of the four outcomes amounted to relatively few significant associations among the large number tested. In general, extended TPB constructs were more often associated with increase than with the decrease in time spent walking and cycling. Participants reported more favorable responses to extended TPB items for walking for transport than for cycling for transport and walking for recreation than for cycling for recreation. Um, let's talk about the strength and limitation of the study. The study was done in the large population based sample and cohort design which allows for the, allows for the assessment of changes in four distinct walking and cycling out outcomes over time. Study analyzes use extended TPB constructs that were assessed as they were related specifically to walking and cycling for recreation and transport. 
study sample wise population based with mostly of the same origin of the people, which may restrict the gener generalizability of the findings to other populations. Uh, the, the extended TPB framework applied in this study was one small part of a large conceptual model design to investigate changes in walking and sighting. To reduce the burden of the participant, this study questionnaire included one single item and two item measures to measure extended TPB concern. It is therefore questionable whether those items were able to fully capture each of the constructs relating to walking and cycling for travel or recreation. A wider socio-ecological influence and behavior change was not examined. So qualitative or mixed methods investigations may be able to investigate the interplay between psychological and socio-ecological constructs and influencing physical activity behavioral change. And about the, uh, the discussion part, promotion of perceived control over cycling for transport may have a positive influence on cycling behavior and behavior change. Trip distance, bicycle availability, cycling infrastructure, and personal circumstances have been identified as a four factor, having a potential influence over people's perception of control relating to utility cycling. Future intervention promoting cycling for transport may need to address these broader underlying socio-ecological factors in order to promote perception of control that may have a positive influence in changes in cycling for transport. Intention and habit constructs were found to predict both an increase and decrease in time spent walking for recreation. Intention do not always translate into behavior known as the intention behavior gap and empirical evidences indicates that individual level influence such as planning and self-efficacy may medi mediate between physical activity intentions and actual behavior. In case of habit, those who are habitually walking for recreation are already spending time walking for it and thus will have the potential to increase or reduce the time they spend doing same whereas those not habitually walking for recreation are less likely to have the potential to reduce thus activity over time. Perceptions of cycling for recreation may represent a barrier to change in behavior. Increasing the visibility of cycling for recreation through promotional media and visual exposure may create opportunities for social comparison, improves people's confidence to cycle, and contribute to the normalization of cycling. Uh, to conclude, all extended theory of uh, planned behavioral model constructs, with the exception of subjective norm, were found to be positively associated with change in at least one of the four walking and cycling outcomes examined in this study, which suggests that further strategies to be explored for the development of interventions to promote walking and cycling. Uh, theory of planned behavior has yet to be applied to predict change in specific behaviors of walking and cycling, and doing so could help strengthen the evidence base of our interventions to promote walking and cycling in particular and physical activity in general. Thank you. Any question for her? You can ask them questions. <laughs> Complicated one. <laughs> <laughs> oh, there. Could you explain more about the extended theory of the plant behavior? Also? What is the difference between between the standard and the standard? Actually, it was very long, so I just need to point out things on it. Actually, in um, theory of plant behavior, there was only three content: attitude, subjective norm, and PBC perceived behavior control uh, and uh, in this extended theory intention, habit and visibility is added. So there is a six content. It's in supplementary appendix, it's not in article. So they add habit and uh, intention, habit and visibility. They have uh, mentioned it like a uh, attitude in the instrumental and experimental. Like item in instrumental is that it is benefit if it is beneficial like for example if it's about me it is beneficial for me to walk for travel or not. And in exper experiential, it is walking for travel is enjoyable or not. If we feel that, we do or not. That is the attitude. And in subjective noun, there is an inductive and restrictive. Inductive, there is a, the people in my life whose opinions I value most would approve of me walking for travel or not. And in descriptive, most people who are important to me walk for travel or not. So if I will get the influence from that subjective norm or not. And then in perceived behavior control, they have self-efficacy and controllability. In self-efficacy, they told that it is possible for me to work for travel or not. 
and in controllability, it is mostly up to me whether I will I will work for travel or not. And then added was intention. And intention it is said that I intend to do more walkings for travel over the coming months. That is my intention, maybe plan. And then habit was walking to travel from place to place is something I do automatically without really thinking about it. And in visibility, they told, they have. Uh, they have mentioned the item saying I see people in my neighborhood walking for travel. So if I see people walking more, I walk more or I start walking more or not. So survey has also a definition for um, uh, a guidance provided on walking or cycling for travel or recreation. For travel definition, they told that by walking and cycling to travel, it means that walking and cycling you do to get to the places. And for uh, recreation definition, by walking and cycling for recreation, it means that any walking and cycling you have done for leisure, health, fitness, and exercises. I I met. <laughs> so it's like uh, they use these tools to predict. Yeah, they they use these tools along with the questionnaire mm -hmm. to predict if the um, uh, maybe attitude or intention to increase for walking, walking for user walking or for the uh, recreation walking. And they analyzed that? While analyzing, they told that uh, social norms was not, uh, did not, uh, was associated much, but attitude towards walking was associated along with the intention and this. I didn't create something. In the paper, they say that the T P B is is a tool for predict the pattern of the behavior, right? And uh, they use the E T B P. But they say that what why they need to do this study because uh, they would like to use this tool to predict the changing, right? The changing of the behavior. So. Um, I don't know what what is the intervention that that make the patient change their lifestyle at the one year and two year in this study because uh, this study is like a focus on the tool that can predict. But they, I'm not sure they they said in their paper that is how they change. No, they didn't mention like how they change, but they just told that from the theory of. Uh, old theory, they have to extend it because uh, mostly the walking and cycling might be the habitual thing and intentional thing. Depends on that much on it. But how from first years and second year that uh, increases, it will not see that. It will not see So maybe as I'm with Uh, they have mentioned in the paper that some of the factors will are uh, associated with both increase and decrease in the behavior. Uh, could you uh, explain? A like, bit more? Uh, if I remember, one one thing is that if uh, about the habit of walking, they have mentioned in this article about the habit in this um, construct. If I have a habit of walking from the beginning, I might will really change or increase or decrease walking. So that is the thing. In they have told that that one item has caused but in case of this other they didn't have Thank you. I don't think there's any more <laughs> <laughs> Okay, come to the last paper. Thank you.
saving lives at birth, development of retrospective theory of change, impact framework, and prioritized metrics. Um, it's rather a pretty long paper, I believe, and it's 12 pages, second long article for today. And when I started reading the paper, I believe most of us feel confused, right? <laughs> I, yeah, I feel that. <laughs> like I, yeah, uh, but I tried, I tried today, I tried to, uh, to help everyone understand what we're talking about in this paper, which is, uh, is a circumstantial. <laughs> okay, uh, so basically this paper is talking about uh, grand challenges. So for those of you who are not uh, familiar with grand challenges, it's a, grand challenges is actually is a, is a way of action. It's uh, started from uh, May 1st in 2013, uh, 2003. So uh, there was a, a, some kind of a summit in uh, US. Uh, whereas uh, Bill Gates talked about the uh, importance, there's a gap and uh, some uh, some things that we need to catch up in people, uh, those in low and middle income countries. So uh, the, uh, the statement is uh, a call for specific scientific or technological innovation to remove critical barriers to solve important health problems in the developing world with a high likelihood of global impact and visibility. That's what uh, the reason they make great challenges in the first place. So the global health big problems they talk about is about HIV AIDS, malnutrition, lack of access to medical care, and lack of educated resources. And the grand challenges, uh, first time they collapse with uh, uh, Grand Challenges Canada is a uh, this is this is are the fundings the, the main fundings of the Grand Challenges. So they have a uh, Grand Challenges Canada, USAID, and BMGF, which is uh, Bill and Melinda Gates Foundations. Which later on, uh, especially in uh, saving lives at birth, they have um, five collapse uh, five collapse, which is um, USAID and BMGF and NORAD. Uh, the FID and uh, later on to, in 2015 they have a uh, Korea International Cooperation Agency to help them uh, fund this uh, very big project of uh, to save uh, mother and uh, child lives starting at birth but actually when I read uh, this uh, saving lives at birth it's not only uh, covers uh, during the 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 delivery, the delivery process, but it's also uh, it's also during antenatal process and postpartum, and uh, especially for uh, child death, which is uh, less than a month. So, and those for uh, stillbirth. So they want to cover a lot of uh, major aspects here. And uh, saving lives at birth actually is a. Uh, if 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 you're a family with MDGs Millennium, uh, Millennium Development Goals, so uh, it it finished by 2015, right? And nowadays we have uh, SDGs, SDGs which is a Sustainable Development Goals, and uh, by mean uh, the SDGs is that we don't want anyone left behind. So we want to uh, help those. Uh, are incapable to uh, accomplish the MDGs, and uh, we want to help them during the SDGs. So the, by 2030, if I'm not mistaken, so everyone is not left behind. That's the that's the uh, uh, the, the, the the meaning of the Saving Lives at Birth. Uh, actually, you can read more at SavingLivesAtBirth.net. <laughs> <laughs> it's a, it's a, it's their, their, their own websites here, and uh, they, they, they say uh, in the tagline is that every two minutes a woman dies in childbirth. So it's a, it's a major concern that uh, a lot of mother uh, give their lives during a childbirth. Right? It's very irony. And uh, in, in this saving lives at birth, they want to. Uh, 
prioritize in low and middle income countries, like what I said before. But uh, they want to mention that, especially those um, in Sub-Saharan Africa and South Asian countries, that which is uh, uh, are less fortunate than us. So. That's what they say, and uh, in uh, Grand Challenges itself, they say they have 2,449 awardees with 90, uh, 90 countries uh, joined, uh, which is Thailand also, they have a lot of awardees, um, uh, I think I count four, four of them is from Mahidon in Salaya. And, uh, if we remember, remember one, uh, you know, Ajahn Sarangi from Biofix is also one of the awardee in Thailand from the uh, Global Health, uh, sorry, Grand Challenges of Global Health, GCGH. So, um, back to the topic, which is uh, saving lives at birth. Here, uh, they, they have a, a program which is covers started from uh, like uh, three three types of award award uh, they have seed award and then validation award and TTS or which is transition to scale award and they, they want to uh, differentiate these three types of award to uh, to to have a different focus so which is uh, like for example like this uh, seed award See the word here. Okay, uh, they they want to focus on move as close as possible to proof of concept, which is uh, a demonstrate a strong evidence in control or limited settings, achievement of promising health outcomes, significant reduction of barriers of health you can read what is uh, seed grant, which is basically is a uh, merely like uh, for example, I will just give example like during um. If you want the clinical prediction score, we have a derivation phase and validation phase, right? So seed grant is uh, the derivation line. So it's a lot of ideas. And uh, actually, they, they, they separate it with um, different uh, different types of uh, phases, which is uh, those innovators uh, have to uh, accom uh, accomplish uh, different different levels to finally become the finalists of the grants itself uh, because they want uh, the grant to be um, not wasted and uh, they want it uh, to have uh, some certain kind of a framework that they have to achieve and accomplish during a certain time of times uh, okay so let just like i'll show you here okay so here as we can see, this one in a supplementary tree. Uh, the tree supplement, but this one is actually, I think is the most important one. Okay, so this one, uh, seven lives at birth prioritized metrics toolkit. So they will uh, measure those uh, innovators. So become how many certain times, uh, a certain amount of finalists to receive the grant. So they have a, uh, this one is the coverage impact. This one is the impact uh, matrix coverage process outputs, and they will measure with the different indicators, numerators, den uh, denominators, and they will say this is yes or no, and uh, they will they will uh, uh, rank them uh, depends on the how 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 many like the coverage and. Uh, whether or not when the funding is deceased, uh, I mean like when there were no more funding from the uh, GCGH, they will sustain for a long time. Uh, as actually, that's the, the big idea here. And uh, if you can open uh, on page 6 of these articles, they, they have a... Remember, this one is the UML, UML and you can see... <laughs> Sorry, flashback. Sorry, uh, it's actually UML. You can see it uh, uh, a short, short. Uh, I mean, like a very clear and short uh, how how the phase and the development of the ideas until you can get the finalists and the impact itself. So, um, and uh, it's just the ideas, but actually it depends on the actors 
and which is, uh, they say, is the governments, policy makers, uh, implementing organizations, funders, and private sectors to take these ideas and um, to implement it later on, so it will be sustained, uh, sustainable. And um, they have metrics. I saw you the metrics and. Okay, so uh, just the uh, conclusion here is that uh, these this kind of uh, ideas can be used success uh, successfully at different levels. Um, and it's merely different, uh, depends on the actors and the ideas. And of course, uh, they have strengths uh, at, to give strength uh, to those uh, low and middle income countries for the area of the vulner their, their vulnerability and uh, to have uh, more and more implications of uh, application in theory of change and which is uh, give more uh, potential of uh, potential value and opportunity for them and uh, this retrospective is to help them actually to learn from the past from the experience so it's not just like new ideas you have problems at the present and you uh, bring innovations, but you also have uh, certain metrics uh, based on the uh, the past from the, the 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 recent things that we can learn from from it. I think that's that's all. <laughs> <laughs> Any question? Okay, thank you. This section, I want you to know that uh, there are several, several conceptual frameworks or theory, social theory, in if you want to to work on any health problem, several of them. Remember one thing: theory in social science is very different from science. One plus one may not be two. <laughs> maybe three or four. And when you apply theory in one community or in one population, the result would be different from the other. The factor that we saw in this paper may be very different from ours. Even we study the same problem, use the same theory. Okay? And one theory can apply in several disease or health problems. One health problem can use several theories. It depends on the circumstance or the situation that, that you study. You don't have to remember theory, okay? If you want to work on this, you have to identify which health problem you go to go first. And then you look at the factors and target it. And then you, you may find the theory later. Uh, why, why you have to use theory? Because it's going to broaden your idea. When, when you find the target problem, you might have very narrow mind about that, very focused. But if you have theory and you review literature, it might broaden your idea or your strategy. Okay, so you don't have to remember theory. There's a lot of theory. If you see that the, the paper say well, perceived susceptibility is important to um, screening. But we may not find perceptibility that important in Thai society. For example, the same factors may not be uh, in the same uh, uh, situation. Okay? Why? Why the same factor is not happen in Thailand in Indonesia and in Nepal. Maybe culture. Right. Because our culture, our environment are different. So you have to keep that in mind. The same thing as theory. Okay. Any 
equation. So then we, you would you like to say we can choose any theory that to, to use to for, for for our equation? But yeah. how how can I know it work? Because if you 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 want to to make a big work, uh -huh. you, you may have a pilot something like that. Okay. I'm not sure. Before you do anything, you have to review it later, right? That is the basic that you, you will, will have to do. So from which ranger you will see that this work in other countries, this will not work in, a, in the other country. So you compare your situation with the literature and see which one is better. You, you cannot know before. If you know that before, you don't do research, right? <laughs> you do research because you want to find some new things, right? So that's, that's the way. Uh, well, actually, I, I'd like to add on. Uh, I'm ready, uh, question, uh, to answer the Amr. Uh, so actually here they have the framework and the metrics that uh, you have to achieve which is uh, the project results achieved in 6 months and 12 months and 18 months and 24 months which is they will give a, a little funds at the beginning and they will see how, 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 how much you progress and how much the coverage itself that is why I, uh, I agree with Ajahn so this is one kind of uh, how you measure the yes the feedback itself I just would like to share uh, this kind of program actually uh, already uh, ready we already done it in um, our country actually in Indonesia so when I was still in a bachelor degree there was a um, uh, called Australian aid so it, the program was funded by Australian aid and they gave us um, uh, some kind of training to help the uh, pregnant mom to help to help maintain their antenatal care visit so we uh, we are uh, grouped, uh, uh, so each group has uh, three uh, people in it. It's medical student and public health students and also a nurse students. So we work because this is a grand challenge, right? It's, it's really really big problem. So that's why we need a team at first, and of course we need big fund. It it even from a donation program, it wasn't funded like completely by Indonesian, but also from the Australia. So we, we continuously visit the, the pregnant moment, woman and the doctor need to do physical examination and the nurse will help the doctor and for the public health um, students we need to uh, make the main framework at first so, so it helps to check the, the schedule whether it's going well or not and then write a report and then at the end of the, the, the um, the project, we will um, do the presentation, and then uh, we suggest to the, the stakeholder which what what thing that we need to do, and that's I think that's the, uh, briefly how the grand challenge program works. It's, it's kind of similar with them. Okay. <laughs> okay. Any other idea? Well, actually, <laughs> I want to add on. Um, if you ever heard about UNFPA, right? It's one of the funding also, but it's not the funding of the Grand Challenges. It's a bit different, but it's a uh, same idea. Uh, actually, they they will give fund, and uh, they have uh, local people, which is um, like, for example, a project in Indonesia, which is the, they they have uh, Indonesian people to work on it. But they have to uh, to report back to the UNFPA to uh, what what they have achieved in, in each month and uh, what are the struggles and what are the success that we that uh, they work during the each month. But however, the problem is that it's not about the the, the money uh, after after all. But uh, some uh, if you remember that 
that every every like uh, region has their own like uh, head of department, that, which is they have their own their own strategy, their own uh, will, and their own uh, you know what they want. But it's different with the what what we want in UF FPA or grand challenges. I think that's one of the big uh, um, things to tackle on because uh, like if if we have some someone that have uh, power so much power but they want to do what they own but uh, it's not it's a it's not like one vision with the grand challenges. It's it's it's, it's not going to happen. It's really hard to convince the stakeholder because so they, they, it is really hard for us because we, in a public health, we do a lot of uh, survey, we conduct them and report every time, do presentation, always like that. But since they're not really interested in our suggestion, I don't know why. Maybe it's because of the fun and they might think it's not uh, convincing enough. But we're still working on that, like repeatedly, even in, in when I was in approximately we did like every month for survey and reporting what's the result and we already listed the priorities that we need to tackle but there's no <laughs> still it's really it's hard not working, right? uh -huh. it's, it's not you, you mean you mean uh, the funding agency not interested in your problem they what? already funded it so we so they fund it and we do the uh, the study yeah. Do. And then what? And then after the presentation, it seems like there's no uh, action for that. So it's just like a waste of money. I, I don't know what's the problem, even though they fund it and they help us to do you, the you mean, program. Uh, the funding agency not interested in your result or yeah. research? Probably what, because. What, what kind of uh, funding agency is that? Uh, when I is the government? Or uh, is the international funding agency uh, for the inform in, uh, from the Australian aid? They they did uh, uh, contribute the contribution after the, uh, the the survey. They still maintain it, but for some, especially in the government, <laughs> in the government, and also the the, uh, the study that conducted by uh, the university, some sometimes it didn't really work. But for the international, it's really really easy to work with them, actually. I, I don't know what's You next. mean the, the result of your study is not going to be implemented? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, I think that's a different strategy because uh, some of uh, research funding agency, they're not, it's not their role to implement. Mm -hmm. So you have to separate that. Because implementation, they would concern with the, the local mm -hmm. people. For example, the Canadian have like a very big uh, agency for research. They only do research, not implementation. Because implementation is like a, is very complicated. Mm -hmm. And you need a lot of effort from local people. And if, if you say, well, they're not interested in, in your result, maybe they're interested in your result, but they don't have any further funding for you. <laughs> not for that. Yeah. <laughs> maybe so. If they're not interested in your result, they wouldn't fund at the first place. So you have to separate several things, and it depends on the, the quality of the result you presented. That's also whether it's convincing. Right? If you just do the survey, it's, it's, it's not convincing, and a lot of researchers do just do the survey. So what? Any other issue? Uh, 
ourselves, we have many theory to adapt for doing research in right. social science. So, there are any suggestion when we would like to do about that this kind of topic and which theory that may suit up? Um, I mean, um, appropriate. Yeah, appropriate. Uh, except from the review literature, or we we can have a clue from the textbook before we going to do searching the literature. Which is uh, <laughs> one thing is that, like like I mentioned, you have to do the literature review, and another thing is that you may talk to people who have experience with this. But a lot of people just have one theory, okay? Those who work with health belief model, just okay, health belief model can apply to all. Those who work with the uh, hand uh, action, just okay, this is the best, but I don't think so. I think it depends on the, the, the health problem. And it depends on the circumstance of that uh, problem. If you review literature, you have broader minds. Okay. All right. See you next week. <laughs>